This podcast is a member of the Voices of Wrestling podcasting network. Visit VoicesOfWrestling.com to hear the rest of our great podcasts, as well as show reviews, columns, opinions, and updates across the world of wrestling. Hello everybody and welcome to the Super J Cast. I'm Joel Abraham, joined by Damon McDonald. Uh, what do you want to talk about this week, Damon? <laughs> <laughs> Joel's in a bad spot. He's in a bad spot, guys. It's, uh, you know, usually he's a, a little bit more uh, upbeat and ready to rock and roll. And, uh, you know, he's the ship, he's the ship captain. I don't know, he's, he's uh He's going through some some tough times. It's, it's uh, where I'm feeling for him here. Uh... So let me let me lay it out for the listeners. Let's, you know, right. let's let's develop these uh, parasocial relationships as All they right. call them. So I still haven't found a job for next year. Um, I I I'm dead set. I I do not want to go back to China by myself. I don't want to leave Mali and Esther here. Um, which means like I've been just applying to every school that I can find here in Thailand and, and other countries as well. But it's a bit late in the year to be doing that. I mean, most of the, the big schools start their recruitment process in October, and I was starting it in like March. So I'm I'm way behind that. And you know, with, with hindsight being 2020, I would have started applying then. But I think back then it was a reasonable expectation that we would be back in China by July. But I, I don't think that's going to happen now. So um, yeah, I don't have a job lined up, which is stressful. You know, I'm waiting to hear back from some places. Um, stuck in the hotel room still. Uh, COVID outbreak in. Uh, Thailand, so everything's shut, so I don't really get to go out anymore. Um, and am I going to reveal this? Oh, fuck it, why not? Baby number two on the way in, in November, which uh, a surprise, a happy surprise. You know, we're delighted, but you know, that brings with it uh, worries about insurance. You know, obviously, there our current medical insurance policy w- with my current employer will no longer be valid if, when my employment there expires, so probably going to end up paying for that out of my own pocket which you know is fine we can manage that but it's just all of those things piled up together you know how we're going to get all our shit out of china but to wherever it is we're going to be living next year um a few disappointments on the the job hunting front it's it's all just piling up at the same time and it's it's a struggle damon i was really depressed at the weekend you know you know when you're depressed when you're I, I just sort of found myself sort of sitting in a chair or lying on the bed just sort of staring off <laughs> into the distance I'm the king not of that wanting to do anything I, I, I invented you know, that <laughs> yeah you don't feel like doing it. you don't want to watch anything you don't want to play any video games you don't want to eat anything you're just sitting there thinking like fuck what what is going on yeah so yeah I'm, I'm not having a great time at the moment and I'm not I'm not ashamed to admit that well look and I as I told you job hunting is something that will suck the soul right out of you just in general, it is it is one of those processes that will really just test your patience, and it's it's a struggle. And 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 then you start <laughs> like I am in the in the middle of that too, and you know you have to do things that really you don't necessarily want to do, uh, like I don't know, like have a LinkedIn profile like the day that I did that I was just I I I just don't want that I don't I don't want it I don't want to be that and then you see everything that's posted there and you think that's not me (laughs) like like I'm closer to a a a fucking six-year-old you know that can barely hold in his poo (laughs) than these people posting all these wonderful inspirational motivated business wise blah, blah, blah. and I'm just like I'm not that dude and then you self doubt your skills and then you self doubt it's it's it's, it's terrible it's terrible you you have to it's almost like dating where you like you got to find the right fit and sometimes you think you're the right fit but they don't think you're the right fit and am I settling and uh, just all of that all you go through all of that and then to add all the other stress. But first, before I, we even – congratulations, dude, because you're a guy that, you know, 
you know, from pulling back the curtain, you know, you guys had wanted to have a child for the longest time, and you you jumped through so many hoops um, to have a, a beautiful daughter, and now you got another one on the way. I mean, that is that is fantastic. It really is. I, yeah, I, I, sorry, so I'm, I don't know if I mentioned it on the show before that Esther was conceived by IVF. Like we've been struggling for a while. And then the baby number two uh, it was, is not IVF. It was uh, natural, which is fairly common, I think. it's It happens quite frequently where a couple will go through IVF and then conceive the second child naturally, uh, which, like I said, it was a, a surprise for us, but good, you know, we did want a second child, but I wasn't expecting it to come this soon, and, like, literally, we slept together once in the last <laughs> few months, and then, bang, <laughs> you know, Mally's feeling tired, and, you know, not feeling a bit nauseous, and I'm like, oh, fuck, it's, you better do a pregnancy test, and then it'd be like, ah, oh. <laughs> and, you know, not that we weren't delighted, but just, it, give me your thoughts, is there, is there ever a right time for this kind of stuff, right, who knows, Give me your thoughts. So you went, and I mean, I'm really pulling back the curtain. If you don't want to talk about it, just say the fucking word, dude. Um, but give me your thoughts. She t- takes the pregnancy test, and she I, I'm gathering she just stares at you for a second before giving you the results. I was in a meeting, Damon. I was in a work meeting. <laughs> really? And then she comes out of the, to- the, the toilet with the pregnancy test showing me. I like just, you know, comical jaw oh. hanging open. <laughs> What? <laughs> I just, I, I, it took me about 12 hours just for my brain to digest that information. It was like, and again, like, not in a negative way, but it was just like getting punched in the face, you know, getting your bell rung where you're just dazed and what, what, what come again? <laughs> right. No pun intended. <laughs> well, I was thrilled. I remember getting the text and uh, <laughs> when Joel texts you and says, you up? <laughs> you were the first person I told Damon. Is that right? I was like, I was like I've got to tell Damon. <laughs> <laughs> I feel great. That, thank you. That's fantastic. Yeah, I got a text of you up because it was a little late on my end. Uh, I think it was a Friday night. I had some people over at the bar. And uh, yeah, <laughs> I was like, wow, that's fantastic. Uh, but yeah, you're going through it, man. I mean, again, I still think about how – you haven't been like I. I couldn't imagine not being back home. You know, I know that you've kind of resigned to the fact that home is where you are now. But people, I, I need. I, I don't know if if if, the, if if it's clear to all of our listeners that Joel has not been home for over a year, well over a year, um, and still making it work. And I told him that. And, and I'll tell you now too. You know, you can handle each of these things individually, and I can certainly understand that um, having it all pile on at the same time can be a little much. But I know that you are talented, and I know that people will recognize that. And that's all. And, and honestly, it's a snowball effect. Like once one thing happens, Joel, you'll find that other things will roll. But yeah, you feel like you need a win. I've been there. You feel like you just need a fucking win. Um. So, I, the only thing I can tell you is you, you just gotta fucking keep swimming through the mud a little bit. Um, and there's clear water ahead, but you gotta you gotta keep swimming through the mud. You have to. Well, keep to use the, the New Japan analogy. Now's the time to kick out at one and stand up, going ah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yes, yes, yes. But yeah, Joel. Like like I've felt it for a month. Like your just the, your general disposition kind of falling and falling and falling and falling and it, look I, it's not like i don't s- s- worry about you you know I, I worry about you know just you know i want to make sure that you're all right and and when we talk about the show um in in general you know i like my first concern is making sure that you're okay and show aside you know, whatever you need to do to to be okay, I'm down with, right? Um, and I don't. I mean, look, I know just this, the 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 you know you had to rearrange your schedule a lot just for baby number one, and I can't imagine baby number two. So that's that's I'm what I'm saying and putting out to everyone is that you got to do what you got to do, and if that means 
whatever that means to to this show, I, I'm fine with you. You you got to do what's what's good for you. Um, and I know that you say, I, you know, I'll make it work. I can I can find schedule. You know, I, I I'm not expecting thing, but but we don't know. And let's add all the other stresses that you have going on in your life. So again, let's. Uh, Let's. I'm glad that you put that out there because I think it's important. Because I know that that. I mean, when I have my struggles, and I trust me, I don't put every fucking one of them out there. But when I do, generally the feedback is positive from our listeners, and they feel like they can connect a little bit more, and they can relate, and they they feel like they're not alone. So the fact that you put this out, Joel, is actually. Um, I feel like it's a good thing. I feel it's a good thing. Now you may not think so right now, <laughs> but, but it's it is a good thing um, because I'm sure people are going through, do, do, you know, not as many much as you are, but there are people that are going through, some, you know, some shit too. And sometimes they like to hear uh, that they're not alone in that. And what better forum to share those troubles in your life than a podcast about New Japan Pro Wrestling? <laughs> I mean, they're going so through happens, the troubles that, of their own. Yeah, I mean, all, all this shit that's piled up happens to uh, line up with probably one of the leanest periods of, of New Japan fandom so, certainly since we started this podcast it seems like there's very little interest or, or buzz in the product at the moment it doesn't feel like it's a um, a hot product that's for sure it does feel stone cold um, and you can tell from I mean, I don't see our numbers, but just if I use my phone as any indicator and the people that I talk with, it's not really a uh, not really a, a, a discussion mover for me. Um, and whereas before, you know, everything, you know, I would ha- wake up to text every day. And I think not only is it the shows, but it's. I think the feeling of, uh, in some, in in a lot of ways, um, Japan's kind of f- falling behind when it comes to the COVID situation, and you know they're they're going through their. They, correct me if I'm wrong. They canceled a bunch of Road Two shows, um, which I said was certainly on the table, you know, last week and the week before. And I don't know if it'll impact. And I don't think anybody knows right now if that will impact. Um, uh, or uh, you know, the baseball stadium shows or the dome show or... Can, can I jump in with a question, actually? Trish says, is there a backup plan for the stadium shows in case the state of emergency is extended until the end of May or moves to include Yokohama? I mean, we haven't spoken to anyone in the company about this, but what's, what's your thoughts on that? I don't think they know yet. I mean, I, look, it, they have to have some type of backup plan, I would think. But what would that backup plan be, Joel? You're in an outdoor stadium with you know, as much social distance as you possibly can for any type of event. Um, what would, what would be the backup empty? They're going to run an empty stadium. I mean, (laughs) all right. I mean, I guess that's the backup truth be told, right? I mean, that would have to be it. They they have the building. They just don't let fans in the building, But, but I will say this too. Then at that point, all that you're doing is you're jeopardizing your staff, and, and the workers and the wrestlers. I mean, you could test everybody again and all that's all that, you know, but you're in a bubble. I don't I don't know how well that works for a touring pro wrestling company. So I guess plan B and again we don't know. We haven't talked to anybody in the company about it, but um the assumption would be empty arenas, right? I would be tempted to just save everything for Dominion if if it all goes tits up. Yeah, one big show, one big massive show instead of split. Well, I mean, how would they do some of the stuff? But yeah, um, I mean, I don't know. I don't know how buildings are flexible when it comes to okay, a lower price for the rent. Oh, now we're not going to have anyone in this building. I mean, that's a loss. If they cancel the show, I mean, is it? I guess my question is this: Is it more expensive to run the show with an empty arena, or to or to cancel? Right. 
Um, I mean, I don't know. I mean, look, they've got the Olympics right around the corner, and they're putting on this this Olympics with no people, no, you know. <laughs> but everything I'm reading, Joel, is, is like life is pretty normal there in the sense that trains are still packed. You know, business people are still going to work. Uh, it's not a crazy shutdown mode. You know, events are shut down, but I don't think it's that. It's not like things are locked down completely. I mean, izakayas and bars and stuff like that. But yeah, I mean, it, it doesn't seem like day to day is 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 weird. Um, oh, we're, we looks like we uh, looks like we do have some news. Uh, you want to paraphrase, uh, Joel? <laughs> Yes, uh, in, in response to Trish's question, the fact that the shows are outdoor is significant. They should be okay. Yeah, yeah, outdoors. Um, and and it's and correct me if I'm wrong. These would be considered afternoon shows too, right? Yes. So it's not going on too late. So I'd, you know, the, the curfew, quote unquote, would not be applicable here because it'd be all, all wrapped up in good time for people to get home safely. Okay. All right. See, ask, ask, and you shall receive. Right? <laughs> there you go. So, uh, as live, live, uh, live responses. So good. That's. Uh, I'm glad to see that. Uh, glad to see that. <laughs> I'm glad to see the phone still works. <laughs> uh, I'm just kidding. Come on. Uh, we just want to be loved. That's all we want. You know. That's all. That's all we're doing this for. We just want to be loved. All right. And, and speaking of wanting to be loved, Damon, um, given Mally's uh, pregnancy situation, bedroom activities are just out of the question for now, for, for the first 12 weeks at least. Oh. So I don't mind telling you, you know, I've, I've shared a lot with listeners. Let, let's, let's throw one more thing in there. My pubic hair is an absolute mess right now. <laughs> it's a disaster down there. Because yeah. obviously, you know, there's <laughs> no, nothing's happening. It's not seeing any action. So I just... Let it all go. <laughs> You're just a mess down there, right? Yeah. Oh, well, look. When the time is right. Well, how about this? Maybe, maybe the fact that, you know, it's it's gone, you know, your fucking dick looks like Bruiser Brody at this point. <laughs> um, you, maybe if you be a little bit proactive on this one, right? Be a little bit, um, you know. Uh, take the first steps in getting her uh, at least to, you know, give it a glance. Because here's the thing. Just because, you know, one thing can happen doesn't necessarily mean that uh, other things can't happen, right? 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 Well, listen. Joel, let me recommend something for you. Maybe you've heard of it. it begins with a man and it ends in escape. Yep, it's a man escaped. Manscaped has what you need. They, they've, uh, from what they tell me, they've created the best ball hair trimmer ever. Imagine that. Imagine that being your claim to fame, right? I created the best ball hair trimmer ever. Hmm. Manscaped did that, and that's that lawnmower 3.0. There's three versions of this. Good lord. Lawnmower 3.0 comes uh, inside a nice little uh, perfect package 3.0. It comes with everything you need to keep trimmed, cut free, and smelling nice down there. And of course, that is the key to get the missus to, uh, I don't know, have a little fun down there. Speaking of those uh, sweaty and stinky balls, Joel, I'm thankful for their crop reviver, right? The crop reviver. This product along with the crop preserver. Keeps your balls from sweating and smelling and sticking. Look, these guys know what they're talking about, right? When it comes to ball grooming, these guys are the uh, cat's meow, the manscaped. And here's what we're going to do for you, fine listeners. Joel, Joel's goal, Joel's goal is uh, to get a little loving. Right, to get a little something, get a little. Talk about a stress release. Joel needs a stress release right now. 
So here's what we're going to do. 20% off, free shipping. All that you need to do is use that code JCAST at manscaped.com. 20% off, free shipping. JCAST is your code. With Manscaped, we're going to clean it all up. We're going to get those balls of his, those family jewels of his, uh, the twig and berries, all cleaned up, all smelling nice. And Joel's going to report back to us, and he's going to say, you know what? I don't feel stressed. I don't. I had a wonderful evening of relaxation and shooting load. <laughs> uh, all right. So Manscaped. By myself in the shower. <laughs> Whatever, you're going to smell good, pal. That hand is going to smell like a million bucks. Uh, 20% off, Joel. Free shipping. It's the code JCAST. It's manscaped.com. Get on it, people, because you know as well as I do. The summer's right around the corner for us here in the United States, uh, and that's sweaty ball season. So get on it right now, 20% off. Free shipping, your code JCAST at manscaped.com. Thank you, Manscaped. All right, well, let's get on to something that I am enthusiastic to talk about, which is uh, New Japan Strong. I thought we'd start with that this week. Uh, we opened up with JR Kratos and Chris Dickerson beating the team of Clark Connors and TJP. So JR Kratos got the win, the pin over Clark Connors following the game changer. And I, sh- I like this match. I thought it was just like a, a JR Kratos showcase. He is uh, impressing me more and more each week. I thought Clark Connors bumped really well for him here and made him look great, but Kratos show more uh, mobility and, and athleticism than I've seen from him on Strong before. So it seemed like they went out of their way to make him look really good here. And th- that game-changer finisher, the wheelbarrow German, very cool finisher. I like it a lot. So I am uh, officially upgrading J.R. Kratos' standing from World Tag League entrant to New Japan Cup entrant. Wow. That's, that's where, he, he, yeah, moving up in the world, Damon. And, and also keeping that little thread of the Chris Dickinson discord with Team Filthy going on. There was that little moment later on in the match with a blind tag and, and he didn't realise and get him annoyed about that. And um, I've also, you know, I, I mentioned last week that I thought the LA Dojo were like Cobra Kai for, for Karate Kid fans. Clark Connors is the Johnny Lawrence of the LA Dojo to keep that comparison going. But yeah, good match. I thought Kratos looked great here. What do you think? Yeah, me too. I did too. And, and I'll tell you something else. Team Filthy. What do you think of Team Filthy? Because I'll tell you flat out, they're probably one of my favorite, I, I think it's fair to say, to call them a faction, right, at this point. Uh, one of my favorite factions in all of New Japan Pro Wrestling. What do you think of that? Yeah, definitely. They're like, the, I, I may have said it before, like the high school jock bullies who are going to shove you into the locker as you walk past. And, and they don't they don't cheat. You know, they don't break the rules, but they're just bigger and stronger and better than everyone else, and they know it, so they're cocky as fuck. And I like that. Me too. Right. It's a totally different – it's not a bullet club dynamic, that's for sure. Um, yeah, I agree. I mean, like I said, I, I'm I, I'm hoping that strong I, – I, I wish there was a way that they could tell us if viewership – if they could tell viewership is up or down on strong. Um, because I, I really feel like this is one avenue for all the things that we talk about, how New Japan feels cold. It doesn't feel like it's a promotion that's running on all cylinders. Um, the one positive that they really have, have had is strong. And I think the only thing that they need is just a little bit more of that week to week as opposed to just matches it's just something to kind of hook you in with angles or something like that but again we talked about that before but team filthy love uh i like this i actually like this match a lot like this was maybe my favorite match of the of the um of the uh, show um it was quick fun uh i like i like the little shout out the uh the uh 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 antonio anoki reference <laughs> with the, with the finish Everything was good. I, I liked it. I thought it was solid. Yeah. I'll tell you what, actually, Team Filthy, they've got the, the energy of like a, an MMA training camp. You know, like they've got mm-hmm. the, 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 if you follow MMA, they, you know, the, the, I don't know what you call them. Are they called camps? I don't know. But, you know, certain people train with a, a certain other group of people and you get a little beefs between different training camps like Jackson Winkle John, I want to say, American top team. 
throwing yeah. some names out there maybe completely wrong but yeah that's that's what it feels like and obviously with uh, Tom Lawler's MMA background that's that's uh, probably what they're going for and and it, I think comes across really well I think so, it's um, a I think it's a less polished and I mean this in a good way like a more grimy team Taz right like what I feel like team Taz should be for in, in AEW like I think team filthy does it better and pardon upon more filthy a little grimier which I like yeah, definitely. Uh, second match was Rocky Romero defeating the debuting Wheeler Utah in 12 minutes, 41 seconds with the Diablo armbar. So, yeah, this guy, uh, Wheeler Utah, first time I've seen him, 24 years old. Very impressed, Damon. He, he's got the look. Uh, uh, and getting a singles match with Rocky Romero off the bat, I think, counts for a lot. You know, that's them really showing that they've got faith in you. Nice grappling, good submission chops. He's got a, an interesting range of holds, almost reminiscent of uh, Zack Sabre Jr. Scrambles were good, transitions were good. Some nice, unique-looking offense. I thought he sold his arm really well throughout. Elbow strikes, nice and stiff. Showed good fire, good passion. They did mention that he's a junior, but he's got like he's got that physique and frame that's not dissimilar to uh, a younger Will Ospreay, where you can see the potential for him to pack on a bit of muscle as he gets older and become a heavyweight. And... I don't know. I, I'm, I apologize if this is a, a really stupid thing to say, but I wonder if being, you know, being a young, good-looking uh, and, and being mixed, mixed race, he's half American, half Japanese, m- might get some people in the Japan office to sit up and take notice. I don't know. It, it might be a, a daft thing to say, but it, it did pop in my head. But at any rate, I was really impressed with him. I think we showed a lot here in a relatively short match, and I, I want to see more of Wheeler Utah. I'm, Tempted to throw out some hot takes. I'll just say that I can see very bright things in his future. I like the match a lot, um, and I like I like that Rocky's kind of like the uh, the litmus test, if you will. You know, you bring him in a minute with Rocky to see how he does. And I thought the match was fantastic. Um, it, it, let's let's do this. Like for me, he's been off my radar, right? Um, not somebody that that I remember ever seeing live when live shows were happening. Um, and I do remember seeing his name maybe on like beyond shows or, or stuff like that, but certainly not on my radar. Uh, he he made me want to go and look a little bit more, dig a little bit deeper, right. And, and find some stuff that was out there. So yeah, I think it's a good pickup. Um, and again, it's one of those things about strong that I really like is that it is this kind of melting pot where all these different guys, like, not to give it a, maybe this is, is a, a terrible comparison, but what Strong is right now feels a lot like the the indie hotbed, <laughs> you know? It really feels that way, uh, where guys can get some television time and some some bigger exposure, um, and they're able to bring these guys in and out, um, you know, and do these tapings. I thought the match was really good, um, I th- and I I would agree. Let's 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 see Wheeler back. Let's let's see what what else we got with him because I think it's a good fit. Which brings us on to the third match, the main event, the New Japan Cup 2021 USA Final, where Tom Lawler defeated Brody King in 20 minutes five seconds by rear naked choke to become the first strong open weight champion. And as with all Tom Lawler matches, I like that MMA flavor that he brings. It, it lends like an air of authenticity to the contest. Lovely. Uh, meaty chops early on from Brody King and then that really cool missed cannonball spot where Brody landed right on his noggin it was a, a great turning point in the match like you know you, you just fell on your head now I'm going to fuck up your bad leg really good stuff but then they did like a the missed chop attempt into the ring post that spot it's a bit cliche for me it's a bit played out for my taste I think maybe they should have just stuck with a leg or you know if you want to be really flash then do the neck given what just happened with the cannonball but maybe a minor complaint there striking was crisp I think Brody King is a guy who uses his size really well. His moveset really complements how huge he is, which isn't always the, the case for big wrestlers. We've seen plenty of big wrestlers who just sort of wrestle a normal style, but Brody really sort of throws his mass around in a, a way that's very dynamic and, and has a lot of impact to it. Um, and I, I really enjoyed the spot later on with Tom Lawler taking a risk with the jackknife pin attempt, which left him open to the pile driver. But obviously he kicked out because... Tom Lawler's enormous head is uh, impervious to damage. Like when you power drive Tom Lawler, it doesn't hurt him. It just leaves a dent in the map. So uh, also from Lawler, really impressive show of strength with the Uranage when he lifted up Brody King. And you know, they did the, the fighting spirit spots. Not so sure those spots work 
well without crowds to react to them but I enjoyed the finish a lot with Tom Lawler chaining together the rear naked choke attempts and then the PK back into the rear naked choke and there's a little moment of resistance and defiance there from Brody at the end didn't tap out but he passed out at the end referee called it so I don't think the loss hurts Brody at all and it's also uh, like I mentioned earlier refreshing to see Lawler as a heel uh, who doesn't need to cheat to win he's just you know superior technique superior strategy really good match here I thought and, and the right man won I agree. I, I feel like the right man won, number one. Um, number two, um, I, I remember going into this match, and I talked about it last week, where I just didn't want to see too much brawling, um, and I kind of wanted it to be a little bit more of heavy pro wrestling, and I think there was a decent mix. I think in the beginning, there was a little bit too much brawling for my liking, but um, toward the end, it kind of turned around toward a little bit stronger when it came to like a like a title wrestling style. And um, I did like the finish. Uh, I like the last, you know, two or three minutes of this match. I thought it was really good. Um, and then you had the angle at the end. That kind of, I mean, you had little breadcrumbs of it forming. I don't know if I'm ready for this yet. Like, I like the idea of of, of the match. I think the match is. is on paper, sounds really sexy to me. I don't know. It seems like, like a little quick. I kind of wanted to see a little bit more uh, team uh, 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 filthy. But, um, yeah, I mean, Chris Dickinson challenging, taking the mic. Um, kind of came out of nowhere, but didn't come out of nowhere, right? Um, and I wish it would – I don't know. I just felt like we could have done this a little bit later. It seems a little bit rushed, but, okay, we're, we're going there and – I think the match will be great anyway. So, uh, who cares what I think? Right, right. <laughs> yeah, no, I, I, I take your part. Oh, I should say, I think very good tournament overall. You know, good yes. short matches, clean finishes, right people going over. I think Lawler's a, a great choice of champion. I, I would love to see a long and dominant reign for him. Ideally, I think he should hold it until he's able to travel to Japan and, and showcase it there. Um, yeah, I, I take your point about the way they set up Chris Dickinson, but I will, in their defense, at least they didn't do like a, a hokey surprise attack. I liked the fact that he just called a shot when no one else came out. And yeah, it makes sense. Breadcrumbs have been there, as I said last week. Tasty first title defense to look forward to. Yeah, 100%. I agree. Um, once again, that show on television that nobody's watching, right? <laughs> I, I hope I hope people are tuning in. And and and. and you know, it's it, it's everything that I think people are looking for, um, except they, they got to bring fans in somehow. And this and the weather is turning nice. And I don't know what kind of restrictions California has at this point, but you mean to tell me we can't tape some shows outside, get some people there? I think that would add a a a. Oh, but if they have fans there, people will be raving about this show. Yeah, don't you think? Like if they have fans there, that people would. I think, like, I think that would be even more of a destination for independent pro wrestlers in this country. Like people would be chomping at the bit to get there. Um, and again, we're we're cherry picking the best of the best, which is a pretty great a great thing. Um, so again, the weather's turning nice. Uh, you're in California, which you already have typically great weather. I don't know what – I mean, I know they have baseball. They have fans at, in baseball games. So you mean to tell me we can't do a little outdoor show or, or outdoor tapings? I think that would be fucking fantastic. Uh, so we need that. Um, and I think – I think. look, I, I don't think I'm saying anything that's, that they're, they're going to listen to the show and be like, oh, we what a fucking great idea. I mean, I think they already kind of figured that out. But once they get that going, that's going to be some good, good shit, as the kids say. Yeah, I mean, no, you brought that up, Damon. Let, let's be real here. New Japan feels pretty dead at the moment. It, like you said, it's stone cold for a vari- variety of reasons. We discussed uh, ad nauseum over the past few months. But, but, and and feel free to ignore me, listeners, for this uh, crusty is coming misplaced optimism. But I think if we can... Ride out these waves, you know, if and when things go back to some semblance of normalcy with regards to full crowds who can make noise in Japan, I'm talking about, international talent flying back and forth unrestricted. You know, forget AEW Forbidden Door. There is so much talent on Strong that would breathe life into the stale main roster of New Japan. You know, I, I want lesser guys like, I don't know, Honma Watto. Jado, Ghetto, Evil, Yujiro, even G.O.D., Yano, 
Get those fuckers off my TV. Getting guys like Filthy Tom, Clark Connors, Renarita, Chris Dickinson, Carl Leo Fredericks, Rush. Alex Coglin, Brody King, yeah, Leo Rush. You know, let's even throw J.R. Kratos and Fred Roster in there. Fuck it, Hikuleo too. Let's get fucking serious here. They are sitting on what I think is an absolute goldmine of talent on Strong. I am I'm praying that my, my pathological obsession with this stupid weekly hour of wrestling that barely anyone watches is going to pay off one day. And we get these dudes coming over to Japan like a fucking defibrillator to blast some energy into the, the, the lifeless, bloated corpse of New Japan. I, I want a fucking invasion, Damon. A strong what? invasion. No That's excuses. Just... You know, the, the second those restrictions are lifted, get every single one of those fuckers over there. Beat the shit out of the domestic roster. Put me a, a, a white hot, strong versus New Japan show in Rio Goku or, or a Sakurajo Hall. Fuck. Please, let's, I need let's it. Let's go. Let's fucking go. Hey, listen. It, while Japan is struggling, you you have an opportunity. Like, like I can't believe I'm saying this into a uh, microphone, but the United States, we're doing pretty well here with this COVID shit. I mean, we do have, you know... Uh, who, who would have of- thought, Damon, that hoarding most of the world's supply of the vaccines would <laughs> turn out so well? <laughs> hey, listen, we got to take care of our own first, pal. Then we'll worry about everybody else. Got to fucking fly the flag, man. Uh, anywho, uh, listen, we, we're we fine. We're good now. Uh, we'll, give, we'll give it to you when we're damn good and ready. When we get, everybody gets three. Everybody in the United States gets three shots, Joel. We're not just doing two. We're going to take an extra one. Just like everything we do. We're going to get an extra plate. <laughs> and then we're going to get me, an like, extra... rifling, rifling yeah. through the bins looking for scraps. Oh, there's a, there's a couple of drops left in this <laughs> syringe. <laughs> we, we're, we're, we're the gluttonous country, remember? We're getting three shots. Because uh, we can. Because we can. Billions uh, and billions of vials just going to waste. <laughs> you know, not refrigerated yeah. properly. We don't need them. <laughs> Fuck it. Yeah. Put it down the toilet. Flush them down. Flush them away. They're just taking up space for our baseball card collection. Ah, uh, <laughs> uh, yes. Um, you get you get one with a with a with a happy meal. You get one with a, a McDonald's. You get a you get a Big Mac, fries, Coke, and a vaccine shot. <laughs> It's giving them away. Like I, I heard on them. the next AEW show, you know, they did that mimosa match with Orange Cassie. They're going to do that, but a swimming pool full of the, the vaccine. They're yeah. going to do a gimmick match based on that. Yeah, I wouldn't be surprised if somebody does that, actually. They have like Chris a, like Jericho a little... body slamming someone on <laughs> right. a crate full of vaccine a pool. <laughs> That's a kiddie pool just filled with, like, vaccine. <laughs> yeah. Anyway... Uh, we're doing all right over here. We're doing. Oh, let, let me let's put it this way. We're doing better. Looks like people are 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 getting vaccinated, uh, uh, and the rollout has been a success. My point being is this: let's take advantage of what we got here, right? Let's get some outdoor shows for strong. We'll get some fans. We'll get some more juice. Uh, hey, look! If if that means bringing some people over to the states, it's fine. I don't think it needs it. Um, but yeah, let's, let's, let's do that. We have, we have a, we, I think we have a untapped gold mine, um, with strong. I think we have an untapped gold mine with strong. Um, and yeah, I'm all in like, like a little, uh, again, if you want to call it an invasion, I'm down with it. Uh, but whatever you want to call it, find a way to get those boys over to Japan. And yeah, you're right. This is going to be like that fucking spaceship that landed on King Kong's heart, jump started him, and and you saw what happened there, right? Beat up that fucking robot Godzilla, smashed the shit out of it, and then they became friends and they made out. <laughs> <laughs> great, great callback. Love it. Oh dear. Well, uh, we got a fun little show on Strong to look forward to uh, this Friday. It's the LA Dojo Showcase. So we got the DKC. Oh against TJP in the battle of the uh, three in uh, three the letter short wrestlers. <laughs> do uh, second, yeah, let's throw ACH in there as well. Um, there's another one I'm missing as well. Fuck, there's definitely another... Oh, well. This has fallen on its face, hasn't it? Second match, Ren Narita and Fred Rosser against Kevin Knight and Alex Coughlin. And then third match, main event, Carl Fredericks versus Clark Connors. So seeing the LA Dojo boys, Cobra Kai in action there with uh, maybe they should have um, Shibata playing the John Kreese role uh, standing ringside shouting 
Strike hard. Strike fast. No mercy. That's what I want to see. Let, let's let's go all in on that. I would love it. I would love it. Now, I have uh, breaking news. My couch is here. So um, do you want to pause here and I'll be right back? Okay, so let's get onto the road, the never-ending road to wrestling Don Taku, which feels like it's been about three months long at this rate. There's two matches I wanted to talk about from Monday's show in Hiroshima Sun Plaza Hall. And the first one is the fifth match. That was a special singles match with Sanada defeating Aaron Hanare in 23 minutes, 28 seconds via Moonsault. You know, Damon, I thought this was going to be a a learning curve for Hinare as he figures out how to work uh, a singles match as a heel. But honestly, by the time it was over, I thought he'd done a a, a terrific job in his his first singles outing as a heel. His striking is really good, as expected. You know, nice range of punches, kicks and knees. But I thought he also worked Sonata's knee well, which is something we obviously haven't seen from him before. He's he's got the angry faces nailed down, probably channeling a, a lot of real life frustration to some extent. Some nice reversals. The, the new submission looks good. A bit like a, a twister for MMA fans. Good intensity down the stretch. Tasty arsenal of uh, high impact moves like the, the rolling Simone drop, the PK, the running Urinage. You know, it's exactly what we want to see from him. He's, he's a big, powerful dude. We want to see him laying in the heavy strikes and, and slamming people into the mat very hard and fast. I thought it was an exciting closing stretch with Sonata using his uh, his athleticism to escape the streets of rage and Hanari showing a bit of fire popping up from the dragon suplex. Before he ultimately succumbed to the TKO and the, the moonsault. But I thought it was a good match. Really good match. I, you know, <laughs> you, you do what you can with a Sonata. I thought Hinari did really well here. I think he can do that New Japan main event style no problem. You know, he's been watching it for long enough. So no surprises there. Um, and I was approaching this match through the lens of... Uh, can I see Hinari being in the G1? The bar's not that high when you consider Yujiro was in it last year. So absolutely, why, why not? Um, I'm not convinced... He's going to be much more than the lost post for Empire and Multiman Tags at this point. But at the very least, we're, we're getting to see him in high-profile singles matches, which is worth something, even if I don't think he's going to win too many of them. Um, so, And also, Sonata gets the win here. I don't know if he's primed for something, you know, maybe a never shot. But uh, yeah, I, I would think that there is some significance to him getting this win. Um, and what did you think? I, I thought the match was, was good. Um, I didn't, it, it wasn't great. I've seen Sonar, uh, uh, seen Sonari. <laughs> I've seen Hanare in singles matches before, right? Uh, and again, he's kind of working out the kinks on this new look and 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 new feel. But it's not like this is his first match in New Japan. Um, and you mentioned something that kind of has been eaten away at me is that I, I don't. I want him to be the pin eater on a team that, you know, everybody needs a pin eater. I don't want him to be that. Like, what's the point of this? All you did was give him a new look. And he's just going to be the same Hanare, just angrier, <laughs> right? Now, I'm not necessarily even saying that we're – I. You know, I expected Hanari to get the win because we talked about it before, where it just feels like it feels like retribution week where all the heels get their, you know, get their due and and that's that. And I, again, on the pecking order currently, Hanare, you know, probably, you know, it's Hanare versus Sonata. And I think everybody put the money on Sonata. That being said, What's the point? <laughs> What's the point? Again, if we're just going to have Hanare be the pin eater, just in a different pair of fucking tights. It's bothering. It's, it does, that does, doesn't bother you at all? Or is that just the natural progression that you see New Japan doing with their guys? And it is. It is the natural progression that, that New Japan likes to do with their guys. But... Yeah, I mean, like, this whole thing, correct me if I'm wrong, was to give Hanare a, 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 a new life and new meaning. And it is just yeah, one but, pinfall, but... You know. Yeah, I, and look, this is, non-Empire or pre-Empire Hanare is not getting uh, a 25-minute semi-main event in Hiroshima Sun Plaza, right? Right. So there's something to be said for that. And he's also against Sanada, who we're not a fan of, but he is 
uh, a push guy in New Japan. This is a G1 finalist, a uh, 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 frequent IWGP title challenger. So I don't think it's fair to expect Hinata to be going and, and, and getting that win straight off the bat. I think we should celebrate the fact that he is getting put in uh, what maybe one of the, the, the biggest spots for his career up to this point. I mean, Probably. obviously he, he had that the main event with uh, Jay White at Korakuen a few weeks ago in, in the New Japan Cup, if I'm remembering correctly. But just putting those together, we're seeing an upward trajectory. So I would say don't look too much at the results. Look at the placement of Hinari. I would agree with that, but I'm looking at it with some... Okay, let's make sure that this is just not a guy that's just going to be the bushy of the team, where he's the pin eater. Let's make sure... Again, I don't understand why... We... I mean, maybe we are. Again, uh, no, nothing has has be, been chiseled in stone. That's for goddamn sure. But uh, Hanari Cobb, oh, how great would that be? Hanari Cobb. Uh, man, just, just throwing it out there. But yes, uh, you are right in the sense that I shouldn't have expected something that New Japan rarely would deliver on. And it's probably not even the right thing to do. So um, I'm going to concede that point to Joel Abraham at this point. Uh, yes, Your Honor, well Your Honor, you, you, uh, I, I, I rest my game. <laughs> All right. Uh, sixth match main event was Tetsuya Naito defeating Great Okan in 27 minutes, five seconds with Destino. Uh, I'm going to let you go first here, David. What did you think? Uh, hmm. I didn't like it. <laughs> I didn't like it. Um... I felt like it was really disjointed. I felt like it was... Uh, I, I felt like it was a match that, for me, couldn't I couldn't... Not only could I not get into it, I felt like the people in the ring couldn't find a groove and connect the pieces of the puzzle to, to make this match work. Um, I struggled with it. And I might be on an island with that, but I, I was... Uh, it didn't feel like both guys woke up on the right side of the bed. And I don't mean grouchy, just in their cohesiveness. Like it just didn't feel like the, it really felt like they were struggling with each other. Um, the entire match. And, and, and I don't know why. I, I don't know why. I mean, maybe it's because, I don't know. Maybe they, they, here's the thing. I, I'm, I'm, tr I'm talking it out out loud. These guys have worked together many times. I don't know. It just it felt it felt like a weird, <sighs> disjointed, not quite all the pieces of the puzzle fitting together to form a great match. I thought it was an okay match. I didn't think it was anything to write home about, Joel. Well, that's interesting. I, I, I liked it a lot more than you did. I don't think I enjoyed it as much as their previous match, but... I definitely I mean, did. Yeah. yeah. No, I, I thought this was good. You know, I think that the build-up's been good. I always like to see the sort of dickhead-on-dickhead on dickhead chemistry between them. Uh, the backstage promos have been really funny about being the PR man for Empire and social media and all that. I, I thought the Naito's ponytail-based offense was a lot of fun. Okan bumping like a man, but his selling is really good. And that bump he took for the Tornado DDT was really spectacular. I like his little anime meme submission move choke thing that he does. No idea what it's called, but I like it. I, th I really enjoyed the spot with the half Destino count to the Dominator. Um, yeah, I, I thought it was a really good match. I don't think it's going to change anyone's minds if they're cold on Okan. But yeah, I, I like this a lot. And, and I did wonder, actually, if this is setting up Naito for something. What would you say uh, are the chances of... Naito using this win and maybe future wins as a springboard to being an IWGP challenger come Dominion. Yeah. I mean, I think they got they got a little bit of work to heat up some guys, don't they? And this is one of those situations where 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 we're heating up a guy. Um yeah, I think I think it's in his future. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I mean, who else? Let, let let's let's put it that way. Who else? I think I think Naito's odds on favor to be that guy. Well, we have a lot of shows coming up over the next week or do so. Do we? We do. We do. Uh, we have. Let's start with wrestling Satsuma no Kuni, 
which is Wednesday, April 28th. So, you know, may have taken place by the time you listen to this reader in uh, Kagoshima. So I'm only going to stop and, and discuss the matches that I think are significant. So we're going to open up with Gabriel Kidd and Tiger Mask against Yu Uemura and Yota Suji. Second match, Doki, Zack Sabre Jr. and Taichi against Jado, Tangelo, Tamatonga. Third match, Master Wato, Taguchi, Tanahashi against Gedo, Ishimori and Yujiro. Fourth match, Bushi, Sanada, Naito, Shingo against Cobb, Hinare, Okan and Osprey. And then we get into the top end of the cards. Fifth match, no time limit, KOPW 2021 provisional. The KOPW 2021 holder, Toriyano, defending against the challenger, Evil, in a Yano Toru style blindfold match, darkness match. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Do do you give a shit? No. Not even... Not even for the laughs. Not even for the laughs. I really don't... uh, and I'm sure people will praise its comedy. I don't. Um, I I I can't believe that this this match has been one of the more built up matches of the spring. <laughs> right, right. How long have we been talking about this match? Weeks, right? And it's finally happening. It's one of the most built up matches that New Japan has in its arsenal for the spring months. Unbelievable. Uh, look, I'm sure it'll be wacky. I'm sure there'll be shenanigans aplenty. Um, if you, again, are we, are, are we, are we treating this seriously, Joel, or are we just looking for the laughs? Are we rating this on a laugh scale? Look, I, if this match even makes me crack a smile, I will be impressed. Right. Okay. My expectations for this match are on the floor because I'm not particularly keen on either wrestler and I don't like the gimmick, so... It's not off to a good start. Let's put it like that. I mean, yeah. I, look, maybe they have something up their sleeves. I, I, I just, I, I look at this and no one cares. Like, does like no one cares about this, right? I mean, I know no, twenty six thousand no. people voted. Okay, no, okay. No one gives a shit. Right. I could not give a single fuck. So there you go. Hopefully, uh, but here's the thing, though. So we're going into this just absolutely fucking hand waving it, right? And they're gonna go out and do like a sort of King's Road style, <laughs> right. fucking tearing, like <laughs> dropping each other on their heads, <laughs> right, right, right. It, it, watch it be. Watch us come back. I, I would, and I want it to be. I want to be the biggest wrong dope on God's green earth. Come. Whenever we got to review this this show and this match specifically, I want to be wrong. I want to be stereotyped. I want to be classified. Um, I want to be wrong. I just I just don't see any possible way out of this of, of this not just being a shit sandwich. But well, let's see. They're pros. I'm sure they got something up their sleeves. Would you like to see Evil win and thus uh, relegating him to the KOPW tier of the roster? <laughs> I would like to see both lose and never wrestle in a ring again. No. Um, I, 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 I mean, I don't know. <laughs> yeah, fine. The Evil wins. He's the new KOP champion, KOPW champion. I cannot believe I'm saying that. But yes, let's do that. That sounds wonderful. And our main event is the IWGP Junior Heavyweight Tag Team Championship match with the champions showing Yo Roppongi 3K defending against the challengers Kanemaru and Desperado in round 86 of their, <laughs> their Never feud. ending. Yeah. Uh, I, I, I like the match. I always enjoy the match, but it's hard to get too excited about it when you've seen it literally, what, 10, 11 times already. Right. Does that mean that they, again, have to have something up their sleeve with this? Does something I, have to happen? You'd, you'd hope so, but I'm not going to hold my breath because there have been plenty of times when I've thought there should be something planned and is the right time to do it, but they haven't. So I am just looking at this match, you know, four very, very good wrestlers, two, you know, really good tag teams. I'm sure the match would be good, but it's just uh, emblematic of how stale the, not only the junior tag division, but just the junior division as a whole, that, that there's, there's literally nobody else. The shame about it is, is that the match will be good, right? I mean, both these teams are good, real good in in some cases. It's just that you're right for the four hundred and seventy seventh time we're we're seeing this. Um, 
And they're putting it in a main event, which, again, they'll give it time. But, again, we've seen this a thousand times. they got to have something up their sleeve. Are, would you be disappointed if finish, bell rings, Kevin Kelly signs off? Are you going to be disappointed? Uh, so what are you getting at? Do you, are you thinking there should be, what, maybe Yo, yeah. let's say Rapongi 3K lose the titles and then Yo snaps and turns yeah. on show and they break up? Yeah, or, or he joins, yeah. A fac- or jo- joins a faction or something happens. Mm-hmm. Whatever happens, you know, if he fucking joins United Empire for some reason, I don't know. Who who knows? But something has to happen. So a, a tag team runs in and and destroys them. I, some angle setting up something new and fresh is what I'm asking for. So whatever 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 that turns out to be, do you need that to occur at this match for you to be satisfied with this this match show? Yes, I'm going to give you yes, but I will, at the same time, I think it's unlikely that it happens. I would give you like a 15% chance of that actually taking place. I think the more likely outcome is, oh, Rapongi 3K defended the titles, yay. You know, 20, 25 minute match, good match. Everyone goes home and the junior tag division goes uh, trundling on into <laughs> the Ouroboros style snake eating its own tail until the end of time. I hope not, man. Again, it just like it's. If I say again one more time, punch me in the face. Um, it's one of those things where it's they're putting it at the top and they're going with something they've gone with a million times. And you're right. Why am I expecting anything more than what they always deliver anyway? So okay, well, I'm not, I'm not going to hold my breath, but fingers crossed that there's something up their sleeve. All right, so let's go to uh, Wrestling Satsuma no Kuni Night 2. So that's Thursday, April 29th, also in the Kagoshima Arena. I'll read through the card, Damon, and you shout, shout, mind you, stop when there's an interesting match that you'd like to share your thoughts on. All right, okay, we'll so see we'll you start- next week, everybody. Have a good night. <laughs> okay, keep an open mind, please. So we're starting off uh, Uemura and Suji against Bushi and Sanada. Second match, Tiger Mask, Sho and Yo against Suzuki, Kanemaru, Esra. Well, okay, look, here we go. First of all, uh, we've got Sho and Yo teaming up on night two. So unless right. they change things around, which they might do, you know, they have they have done it before, but there's a you know an indicator that it things are unlikely to change. But who knows? Okay. So uh, Tiger Mask, Sho and Yo against Suzuki, Kanemaru, and Desperado. Third match, Doki, Zack, and Taichi against Jado, Tangelo, and Tamatonga. Fourth match, Wato, Taguchi, Tenza, and Yano oh, against oh. Dick Togo, Ishimori, <laughs> Yujiro, and Evil. Wait, 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 wait. Please, stop. <laughs> stop. Please read that again. Uh, slow and deliberate style, please. So everyone can absorb the magnitude of this hunk of shit that you are about to read off. Please, Joel. Fourth match. Fourth match. 30 minutes limit. Master Huato, uh. Ryusuke Toguchi, Hiroyoshi Tenzan, Toru Yano uh. versus Dick Togo, uh. Taiji Ishimori, Yujiro Takahashi, uh. Evil. <laughs> New Japan Pro Wrestling 2021, ladies and gentlemen. Holy mackerel. What a fucking... I gotta watch this match just to watch this match. Could they make... I mean, if they tried, could they put together a worse match? <laughs> like, a match with just everyone that I don't give a single fuck about in one match? God bless you, New Japan. Woo! God bless you. Well, we're up to the business end of the card then. So again, same, same parameters. You shout out stop if there's a, an exciting match you want to talk about. Fifth right. match, special tag match. Uh, Naito and Shingo versus Okan and Osprey. That Sixth will be good. Match. Stop, stop, stop. That okay. will be good on paper, right? Mm-hmm. That, that sounds like a real fucking tasty, tasty match. And, mm-hmm. and I will say this too. From what I've seen of, of, of the 700... And 56 versions of the multi-man tag matches that, that you've had lately. Those matches have been pretty good. Like, you know, for it being dry as toast, at least those matches are 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 decent. They're, they're pretty good. And I think this match will be pretty good too, right? I mean, on paper, that looks pretty good. Yeah, definitely. I mean, you've got four quality wrestlers there, so you, you know they're going to deliver. And then sixth match... Special tag match, Tanahashi and Ibushi against Hinare and Jeff Cobb. That's good. 
that that does that tell you anything? Well, th- this is interesting because this is Kagoshima, which is obviously Ibushi's hometown. And this is the only match that he's taken part in for the whole tour. So you would think Ibushi... Pin that fucker to the know, ground Tanahashi, is what you do. You pin uh, him to the ground. Is getting the... Sorry? I say you pin him to the ground. He yeah, takes the well, fucking yeah. fall. That I think this is the, the rehab for Hinare. This is where you jumpstart the Hinare and Cobb tag team. Where they're saying, no fucking about, no happy ending here, fuck you and fuck your hometown. Putting, <laughs> I know we kept saying it a few weeks ago, stretcher, putting one or both of these guys in a stretcher and establishing the Hinare Cobb tag team as a tag team to be respected and feared in the heavyweight tag division. Oh, God, I got a boner. Oh, that's what I want. That's what I want. I want them to come out fucking Brody Hansen. I want them to come up Vader. Bigelow. I want them to come out Steiners. I want them to come out Road Warriors. I want them to be dominant. I want them to destroy Ibushi and Tanahashi. I want a stretcher job. I want just an, a complete fucking ass kicking. Uh, and not a brawl. I don't want them brawling in the crowd. I want them to be suplexed out of their fucking boots is what I want. I want Tanahashi's hair weave to be flying into the fifth fucking row. I want Abushi to be in a corner huddled in tears after taking 900 suplexes. That's what I want. I want this to be the beginning. And yeah, I want Abushi to be to to fucking lie down. I don't you know, I don't care who does. But I yeah, I want I want a complete decimation to establish Cobb and Hanare as the fucking team to fear. Yes. Please. What we should have really is Hinari finishing pinning Tanahashi as revenge for Ooh. all the uh, the shitty results they got in the world tag league together. I think Ooh. there'd be a nice bit of continuity there. All but right. uh, well, we're living in hope more than expectation. So that's a uh, wrestling Satsuma no Kuni, and we will also have this Monday, May the third. Wrestling Dontaku in the Fukuoka Convention Center. So mm-hmm. night one, we have Wato, Tiger Mosque, Tenzan, Yano against <laughs> Togo, Ishimori, Yujiro, and Evil. Uh, second match, Sho, Yo, and Okada. So again, we got Sho and Yo together against Kanemaru, Desperado, and Suzuki. Third match, Bushi, Sanada, Naito, Shingo against Cobb, Hinari, Okan, Osprey. Fourth match, we have the rights to challenge the IWGP Tag Team Championship match. Singles match, Zack Sabre Jr. versus Tangaloa. So if Zack wins, then Dangerous Techers get to challenge G.O.D. for the tag titles. If Zack loses, then Dangerous Techers never get to challenge again. Let's go, Zack. Let's go, Zack. <laughs> get the chance going now. Yeah, because we need Techers with a win. And then Cobb and Hanare, little little feud there. Uh, we could have a magical summer. Tag team could be interesting. This, honestly, this is I'm, this is I'm, this is my hope here. You know what I mean? Like I'm like I'm I'm holding on to this hope that we have a chance of this happening because that would be a sexy summer. So let's root for a Zach win here, guys. Right? Uh, and also maybe too early to say make or break for Tangaloa in terms of singles wrestling. He's got he's had a few opportunities, right? And I think the jury is still out on whether we uh, we, we need him to stick as a tag or uh, or mm. uh, stay as a single or or what we're going to do here. So because, because like being the more impressive wrestler in a tag team is very different from being a good singles wrestler. One hundred percent. One hundred percent. Now, I also will say that it does have potential to be a fucking outstanding match. Right. Have these two ever worked a singles match before? No, I don't think so. I, I think Tangela singles matches are very <laughs> rare. Yeah. So that's an interesting component to this too. I don't know. I think this I think people are are I think people might be be undervaluing this match. I think this match has potential to be really fucking good. Because they're really different styles. I don't know. Like if Tonga Loa does, or, or you know, if, if we're doing a fast-paced match, let's not. I don't. This doesn't need to be twenty minutes. It shouldn't be twenty minutes. 
It should be in the 10 range, 10, 15 range. Make it a bit of a sprint. This could be good. I'm holding out hope on this one. How about the fifth match? Iron Finger from Hell ladder match. <laughs> tai Chi versus Tamatonga. Now, uh, both wrestlers have had uh, ladder match experience before, so it's not first time out for them. Oh, really? But, yes. Um, but, well, okay, what, what do you think? What are your expectations? Do you think this has got potential to be a, a show stealer, or are you expecting a car crash? So they both have, they've both been in ladder matches? Yep. Really? I know, yeah. G.O.D. have been in one of the ROH ladder wars. Oh, okay. I can't remember off the top of my head what ladder match tights he was in, but you know, I specifically remember him saying in a backstage comment that he has been in a ladder match before. Okay. All right. That's, you know, I didn't really do my homework on that, I guess, but... <sighs> um... Again, I'm hoping... I don't, I don't expect it to be... I expect it to be more of a tease the car crash than the car crash which lends me to think this match might be a bit disappointing okay Um, wait sorry sorry damon listen to this one so world x cup 2004 uh third round four-way ladder match this is tna eric young versus jerry lynn versus mr aguia versus taichi ishikari so that was tna back in 2004 I mean, that's correct. If I'm uh, my math is correct, that's a hundred years ago, Joel. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm sure it's very fresh in Tai Chi's mind. <laughs> right. Yeah. Last, uh, last what, I mean, Premier what were you League. doing in 2006? What were you doing in 2006? 2004, Joel? celebrating Arsenal's last Premier League win is what I was doing. <laughs> Still doing that. Still hung over from that win. Um, that seems like a long time ago. Uh, look, my expectations sure, are. This low. is the second ladder match in New Japan history. Yeah, I, 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 I've talked about it for weeks. Like they picked these two guys to be in a ladder match of all the guys they had in their on their roster throughout all the years. They picked these two guys to be in a ladder match. Okay, seems weird to me. Um, not two guys I would have at the top of my list. Again, fighting over not a title, not a championship, not a shot at a championship. Fingers. Made of iron. <laughs> I'm going to be honest with you, Joel. I don't care what family heirloom you might have in your possession. I don't care if it's... I don't care other than maybe you yourself or your child hanging from the rafters. I'm not climbing a ladder and fighting anyone for anything. <laughs> There's nothing I would be fighting for. Uh, and I think you would say the same. It's a dopey stipulation. Uh, but we're doing it anyway. I have, uh, my, as you like to say, the floor is low. Um, and I think we're going to be teasing more than we deliver when it comes to the car crashes. Prediction? I sleep five minutes in. <laughs> um, well, Zach's winning, right? Yeah, and I would like to think that Dangerous Techers are winning... Uh, a subsequent IWGP heavyweight tag title match. So is it going to be a, a complete sweep for uh, Dangerous Techers? Yeah. Because I think we're trying to put this fucking story to bed, right? We're, we're... Yeah. You can send G.O.D. back to the States and they can fuck about on Impact or, or Strong or whatever. Yeah. Give him back his goddamn fingers. <laughs> and uh, let's end this right now. So, yeah, let's, let's do let's do Tai Chi with the win. And the sixth match, the main event, never open weight championship match, Hiroshi Tanahashi defending against Jay White, which is a match you know it's going to be good, and they've had very good matches in the past, but we've seen a lot of them, and Jay White not being there to help build the match has hurt it. It just feels very, very cold. Yeah. Yeah, it has. Um, the Here's my fear. We Give me the sexy undercard match that's going to save the show. Tangelo against Zach. Okay, that's a lot to ask for a guys, two guys that don't really have a great history together. They're going into these this match cold. Um, and again, I, I hyped it up. I think people are undervaluing it. But even with that said, so we're asking Zach to to make this match, and we're asking both these guys to 
be that strong undercard because while we have two wrestlers, Jay White and Hiroshi Tanahashi, Hiroshi Tanahashi, again, arguably the best wrestler of our generation, Jay White, outstanding as well. Uh, they, uh, this is not Okada Tanahashi from the fucking dome five years ago. I got, I have, I do have some. I don't know. If, let's put it this way: What makes New Japan Pro Wrestling shows great? You have an undercard that is strong and a main event that is spectacular. I where where are we finding that here? I have a strange feeling we're going to have a lot of negative reviews on this show. Unless Tanahashi and Jay White can pull a fucking miracle and have a great match. Am I wrong in that? My expectations for that main event are high because they've had really good matches in the past. Mm. I'm sure this one will be really good as well. But just it, there's no buzz. To, I'm not excited for it. Um, so my th- that's where my reservations are. Not the actual quality of the match itself uh, although you know if they're trying to sort of think well this is the main event six match card we've got to go out and do 35 minutes here then right. I'm, I'm worried um, right. that's not what it should be that's not what the never title should be um, but but that's what know, it will it, be it's Tanahashi and JY that's what it will be yeah um, right. I mean, who do you think wins <sighs> JY yeah, I, I suppose if Jay White wins, then he can do the Grand Slam gimmick, you know, having been one of the few or maybe only people to have won IWGP Heavyweight, Intercontinental, US, never titles. So does that <laughs> excite me? Does that make a compelling storyline? Not really. I, you know, I'll, I'll wait and see what's next. But it does definitely seem that uh, this never title is the new Intercontinental title uh, functionally in, in as much as this is something that you give two main eventers to fight over who are not in the the heavyweight title picture. So uh, that's that's what I think we're looking at here. <laughs> Which we had with the Intercontinental title. <laughs> well, now it's a different color, so... Ah! <laughs> there you go, different gotcha. name. Uh, all right, then Wrestling Dontaku Night 2, Tuesday, May the 4th, also for Parker Convention Center. First match, Doki, Zack, and Taichi against Jado, Tangelo, Tamatonga. Second match, Sho and Kazuchika Okada against Kanemaru and Suzuki. Third match, Bushi, Sonada, Naito against Cobb, Hinare, Okan. Fourth match, Wato, Itaguchi, Tenzan, Yano against... No, sorry, it's a 10-man. Uh, oh. Wato, Itaguchi, Tenzan, Yano, Tanahashi against Dick Togo, Ishimori, Yujiro, Evil, and Jay White. Oh. Fifth match, uh, business end. IWGP Junior Heavyweight Championship match. El Desperado, his first defense against the challenger, Yo. Hmm. Boy, do we need Hiromu to... <laughs> uh, That's a, no, you, you're right. I mean, I like... I, I love Desperado, and I yeah. like Yo a lot, but it's not... I don't, it's just it's not a sexy match on paper, isn't it? There's We're, we're lacking star power. There's no fire. power in that division, yeah. yeah. There's, and, and, and... I think it... I, all right, so in a main event, I mean, I think it pretty much confirms the fact that I don't think Rapongi 3K are winning the title. Or, no, I mean, take the fact that they're winning, that it confirms that they are winning the title, right? Like, they're not going to give, give Rapongi 3K the title, right? And then give Yo the junior title, right? So, Rapongi 3K are already the junior right, tag well, champions. Right, right. So, what I'm saying is, is that they're not, they're not going to make Yo a double champion, is, I guess is my point, is what I'm trying to say. Right, so unless Rapongi 3K lose the titles and Yo turns on show and he's the hottest new heel in the company and mm. destroys Despy and becomes the new dominant heel uh, junior singles champion, <laughs> I, I can't see I it, mean, David. Yeah, that's, that's a lot to fucking ask for. Especially when you got all those undercards that you're going to have to change up. You know, it seems like a lot. I don't think they have the I don't think they have the energy to do that. <laughs> They're just like, I'm not fucking booking this shit. Um I'll say Desperado wins. 
Yeah, I think so too. I think the, the chalk pick is Rapongi 3K retaining the tag titles and then Despy retaining the singles title. So, uh, your expectations for the match quality? I think it'll be good. I don't think I, it doesn't. I don't have any reason to believe it will be bad. Um, both of these guys can go. Um, yeah, I think it'll be fine. I think it'll be good. It'll, 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 it'll be solid at least. Let's put it that way. Yeah, as long as they're not trying to do the New Japan main event. I know it's not the main event, but you know, again, if they're trying to stretch it out to be 35 minutes, then it's going to suffer, which is what they started doing with Hiromu uh, earlier on in the year, which I think was a mistake. So you know, let's keep in mind, this is the junior title. Let's book it like a junior match. Let's keep it nice and tight, exciting, yep. high-paced. And I'm not asking for them to be flying around the ring like you know, Ryu Lee, but uh, it, it should be snappy and, and high-paced and intense. At least I would hope. To, to my taste, anyway. Uh, sixth match, then, is the IWGP World Heavyweight Championship match with Will Ospreay in his first defense against Shingo Takagi. They have a history of having not only good matches, but great matches. So I expect nothing less. Given the stakes, given the main event, given on a... On a somewhat high profile show um will's first title defense so you'll know he'll have some some special things up his sleeve shingo is always great rarely disappoints uh they're going to give this match time i have no look it's the highlight of this entire tour right let's be honest it's the highlight of this entire tour um if if we are going to hang our hats on great pro wrestling, people have this match circled. I and again, barring anything unforeseen, this should be great. Uh, I have high expectations. I'd be disappointed if it wasn't, just because of the track record that they have um, and everything that we listed seconds ago. I still I I think Will wins right because I think we have an Okada um, future match that's uh, in the bank. That being said, I think this match will be out fucking standing. Do you think it hurts Shingo taking two consecutive losses to Osprey? Um, it does, but if if Osprey is your champion, you know it is what it is. I don't think it turns him into Hiroki Goto. Um, I still think he he is an important cog in the wheel, um, and I don't think you give him the the world title. I don't think you give – I mean, I look, look, evil had it, and look at where we are now. Um, and people can debate of other former champions where it was a head-scratcher. So I can't put anything past this company at this point. The old the old saying of, well, not everyone can win that fucking title. Well, I, <laughs> um, I don't think they do that. I don't think they put the belt on Shingo. Um no, I think I think you need to establish Will. If Will's your guy, I think you you want to establish Will. Now, again, the the idea of first time champion, you know, is you you know, there's a lot of times where you know you get one title defense, and pff, you're beat, you're done, and then you win it again later on, and maybe a longer reign. We've seen that countless times. I think Will retains uh, in a spectacular match. Yes, I agree, uh, and I hope all the discussions afterwards are about the match and not any other shenanigans or, or shit ideas that they might be having. So, just do you think? Stick to what rest. do you think the likelihood of? Give me, give me your thoughts. What are your, what are your fears on this? Uh, no, no, I think they will. Solid match. Prevail. Yeah, d- okay. d- very good match, and everyone's talking about the wrestling. I hope. Fingers crossed. Um, all right, well, that is our, our preview for Don Taku. Um, should we... We've got time for maybe some quick-fire questions from the back. Quick-fire questions, yes. We can do that, a couple. All right. Uh, Sailor Jerry says, if the factions each had to adopt a young line instead of excursions, who do you think fits where? Um, I will give you, Damon, um, Gabe Kidd going to Suzuki-gun. I'll give you Yotsuji to LIJ. And I'll give you Yuya Uemura for the, the Hontai, you know, the main New Japan army. Can't disagree with any of that, really. Um, put somebody in. Uh, you think anybody drops in United Kingdom? 
The United Kingdom. United, <laughs> United Empire. Uh, could do. I, I do you suppose... think anybody lands with a kingdom with Matt Taven? <laughs> I suppose Gabe Kidd might make sense for yeah. Empire. Okay. Yeah, I mean, those, those make sense. All of those seem aesthetically connective. Sounds good to me. Uh, Joseph says, current next year's Wrestle Kingdom main event prediction, and do you think they'll Ooh. go back to one night Wrestle Kingdom at some point? Uh, I don't think so, not an, at least until the full crowds are back. I think they, they've kind of bat themselves into a corner where to balance the books, they feel like they've got to do two nights. Um, main event, let's go uh, Okada versus Naito. I'll say... Um... So you think Okada wins beats Will eventually? I'm going to go... Yeah, I, I maybe... I could see either Okada taking the belt off of Osprey at the Dome next month. Or maybe even Naito taking the belt off of Osprey at Dominion. But I, I just think that is one of the few uh, big money-making singles matches they've got at the moment. It really is. I'm just trying to think of money matches. I mean, do you think Naito will? Is that a money match? I think so. Yeah, it's a very f fresh match. Like we've never seen it before, have we? As a singles no. match. No. And we did just talk about how it feels like Naito is starting to get back on the back on the griddle. I'll go Will Naito, just because I literally don't have anything sexier in my head that they could do for a Wrestle Kingdom right now. Jamie says, with the IC and heavyweight belts merged, what are your favorite matches for the respective belts? Uh, okay, so for heavyweight title, I mean, one of my favorites, certainly in recent memory, was Okada Naito at Wrestle Kingdom 14, if that counts. I know that was for both belts. Prior to that, Okada Omega at Wrestle Kingdom 11. I think that was a, an all-timer. Okada Shibata at oh, yeah. Sakura Genesis 2017. Yeah. For the IC title, I mean, there's the, the famous ones. You know, Nakamura against Ibushi at Wrestle Kingdom. Hard to look past that one. Uh, other ones that maybe flew under the radar. Naito versus Elgin. That was pretty great. Yep. Um, what about AJ? AJ and uh, Nakamura? Yep, that one was great. Um, New Beginning... Tanahashi versus Suzuki. I really, really like that one back in 2018. Yeah. I mean, we're talking about modern times, right? We're not going back to like the 90s and shit, right? Well, I see title. Has, 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 yeah, what, right, right, right. But, but I mean, the world title. Um, but you're not liking any of the fucking... Uh, oh, that was 2000 anyway, so the jokes don't get that great. I was going to say, <laughs> you didn't like any uh, <laughs> MVP uh, title defenses. Yeah, I mean, we went back and watched that. We never actually got around to speaking about it. It's it's still in my notes, but uh, yeah, that MVP Yano match at the end of that tournament was uh, not great. <laughs> From Philadelphia, uh, yeah, I think we covered the 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 heavy lifters. Yeah, I think those are. I mean, look, if you're making a, I mean, I, you you mentioned Okada Omega hour, right? That was the Dominion one, right? Well, I, um, I don't know. I mean, it's hard for me to pick between the, the first one, the Wrestle Kingdom 11 one, that went, what, about 45 minutes? Yep. Or the, the one that went over an hour, the best two out of three falls one at right. Dominion 2018. Just the fact that I was there in the building and just being a, just an incredible trip. It's hard to look past that. You know, I'm trying to sort of separate match quality and my personal enjoyment and, and experience of it. Uh, yeah, those those two are certainly right up there. They are. I mean, I, to this day, that that over hour match is one of is probably my favorite match of all time. It really is. That and Okada Shibata. Okada Shibata is fucking one of the most unbelievable, tension filled. Just felt important, like from the the, the opening strands of Shibata's music, and the crowd just fucking. They were up for it. And everything about that match is just unbelievable. And the guy nearly died. 
Uh, and, and it's so unique as well structurally because it doesn't follow the the traditional tropes of the the new japan main event style you know there's no very very little reversing each other's finishes and and near falls and kicking out at two and a half they didn't do any of that yeah there were no near falls in that match i'll tell you what okada's selling in that match is so fucking great he where he has that just dead stare you get that where he's like he knows he's fucked <sighs> I mean, that's a match that I'm telling you, I could rewatch a thousand times and never get bored with it. It's such a gr- from top to bottom, from beginning to end. What a fucking match! And here's the thing, too. Like, I mean, obviously, it's Shibata's last match. Um, what a way to go out, man! Oof. I mean, oof. I, I mean, the, I'll never forget that fucking headbutt spot, though. I got to be truthful. That headbutt headbutt spot is that the I mean, there are worse things that have happened in pro wrestling, mind you. But at that very moment, do you feel like things just changed? Like that fucking headbutt. headbutt. It was almost like we fucking... It, like it, it, it was like we... Everything changed after that headbutt. Unbelievable. Mm. All right. You, you, you wonder, don't you, had Shibata still be, be an active wrestler today how different things would be you know what right how different things would be in terms of g1s and, and wrestle kingdoms and just butterfly effect isn't it yeah it really is that one stupid i'll say it stupid meaningless he did the head but they still went another 10 minutes at least Maybe even more than that. Like, it meant nothing in the match. That headbutt could have been a fucking slap, a chop, a knee, something safe. Imagine if, imagine this. Imagine if that was Okada who got hurt. Imagine that. Imagine if it was Okada that got hurt. Again, that was a headbutt that you fucking felt. It was like a baseball getting hit with a bat. Imagine if that was Okada. Whew. Oh, the speculating. All right. Um, I think we're done, right? <laughs> we're done. Yeah, let's knock it on the head there. Uh, all right. So thank you, everyone, for listening and people who contributed to us on redcircle.com forward slash shows forward slash super dash j dash cast. We always appreciate your uh, monetary contributions in these uh, uncertain times. And thank you also to our sponsors, Manscaped. Use our promo code JCAST for 20% off and free shipping. Discord link is in the show notes if you feel the urge to go there and chat about, well, not New Japan Pro Wrestling. <laughs> come, come there and chat to me about uh, Games Master or, or Nightmare or, or Mortal Kombat or, or King Kong versus Godzilla. I'll definitely be up for that those conversations. Uh, at Cobra Kawaii and ProWrestlingTees.com forward slash Super JCAST to get one of our t-shirts. Big thanks as always to Editor Dan. Find him on Twitter at LousyHero219. Subscribe. 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 Um, Irish there. Subscribe. Subscribe to the Voices of Rest. Subscribe to the Voices of Rest. I said no accents. Uh, Voices of Wrestling Podcast Network uh, for other great shows. Give us a five snake review on iTunes. Follow us on Twitter at the SuperJCast. Thank you everybody for listening and goodbye. <laughs>